in Roblox, sometimes we need to customize the way that the NPC traverses between waypoints. And usually we do that with pathfinding links. There are two main reasons to use a pathfinding link. Either A, you don't like the way it behaves standard. So for example, it would climb up this staircase really odd. So I'm using pathfinding links to make it jump in the way I want it to. Or because it's normally other, otherwise unpathable. So here we have a wall. And if I hit run, you're going to see that it's able to teleport to the other side of the wall and continue pathing after three seconds because I'm do intentionally doing it by three seconds. That's that intentional delay. So that's why we use pathfinding links. To set it up, you place two parts, an attachment in each, and then you place a pathfinding link and you set the attachments to each one. After doing so, make sure bi-directional is enabled unless you want it to go one way. You can see that with the direction of the arrow and set a label. For mine, I'm going to do teleport, and I'll show you how to customize it with many different pathfinding links later. So here, I'm then going to go to my code. So first off, we actually have to insert forbidden. It's going to be in the description by rman501. Insert it into your game. Ungroup it in replicated storage, as, as uh, shown. And after you do that, you are good to go. You can just delete the old model, and you're uh, replicate storage should only have forbidden it or anything else in your game. So from there, in, place a script inside of your NPC. And here we have our path file. So first thing that you're going to notice is I'm getting forbidden right here, the AI module. You can ignore all this. This is just, it's an automated test case that I use for testing forbidden. But Here's the actual code that's meaningful. So once you require forbidden, look here. What this code does is I get the config for my MPC. I'm restoring the config to default because it could have been altered beforehand. And then I'm setting visual visualization to true so I can see those purple waypoints. And I'm also setting my hooks pathfinding link reached to this function. This is what lets us customize what happens when we reach that pathfinding link. When I do so, it's going to pass me the NPC in the waypoint. You can see so that when you type out pathfinding link reach, you can see what it wants from you. Uh, make sure you remove those parentheses because we need to set this actual value, not call the function. After doing so, you're provided two pieces of information mainly. You're provided the waypoint.position, which is a vector free. And you're also provided the waypoint.label, which is a string. So we can see that when we go to our pathfinding link right here, you can see it has this label and it also is going to have a position, which in this case is going to be this side because we're TPing to the side. You can see that right there. So after doing so, you can then see that I I'm checking if it's a teleport. So the label of this is teleport. And then what I'm doing is, um, actually, I'll just do that now. What I'm doing here is I'm TPing the NPC. So this is just a normal TP. This customizes the angle of the TP. This is what sets the position. And then I'm waiting three seconds because after I TP, I want to wait a little bit. And I'm returning true. This return true allows the pathfind to continue as normal. So always after you are done, do return true to allow the operation to continue the pathfinding after doing so i'm gonna hit run and we can see this in action so it reaches that pathfinding link waits three seconds and then continues so the other way that i recommend doing this is in this case i have a function that is called or a module script called pathfinding links external what this is is if i go to it Inside my script, I have a module script called pathfinding links. And what this does is it hands off my pathfinding link to anything I put here. So teleport and wait five seconds. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my pathfinding link label to teleport and wait five seconds. And I'm going to take in the same information pretty much here but I'm going to make it five seconds. So this is adding teleport, which is what you just saw, and teleport and wait five seconds. So 
after I do so, we're going to see that this is going to teleport. It's going to wait five seconds. Um, let's see. Pathfinding link return false. Oh, after you do so, you have to set it here. So PF links external dot manager, because I want to call this function. And now will wait five seconds. And then it will continue. So that's how you add a custom one if you want to organize it the way I recommend it. I recommend making this module script because otherwise right there you're going to have a lot of code. So yeah, that's how you do that with Forbidden. It's really simple. It can be optimized really well. You can even make a module script for every pathfinding link you have if you want. And then you can just connect it to a man. So that's the way I recommend doing it. Good luck making your NPCs and have fun.